All right, so on today's episode of uh, maintenance, I had a uh, brake caliper lock up on me. It uh, happened earlier this week, or actually last last week. Um, so I took it off, and I still got three trailer brakes. I know I need to have that one going too. I'm fixing to fix it. Uh, anyway, I'm kind of parked out here in my, I got a cleared out spot right here in my woods, kind of a trail to my creek, but anyway. I got a new caliper. I'm gonna replace the rotor because when that, when that uh, caliper locked up, it kind of ruined my rotor. But I'm gonna keep that rotor as a backup in case something were to ever happen and I needed it. Uh, I could use it and if I got in a fix. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna try to take you along this journey here and uh, show you the process of changing a rotor caliper and putting all new bearings and seals in. First off, y'all, it is very hot, but I'm in the shade and it feels pretty good. The breeze is blowing slightly. So I've already told you in the beginning, I uh, maintenance stay here. Uh, had, like I said, caliper locked up, so I'm, I'm going to be out here replacing it. And uh, so, <clears throat> kind of show you what's going on here. I've got a new rotor right here to put on. I've got bearings to put in this rotor once I get it ready got a seal to put in there i got a sledgehammer to knock the seal in um no i haven't got all the proper tools to be doing the seal so i use what i got which is normally a sledgehammer and a wood block to knock the thing in uh <clears throat> then on the other side i got to replace brakes on that caliper i've got this uh c clamp to uh push the caliper back in so i can put the brakes in i got this new caliper for this side once i put everything in uh, my <clears throat> caliper bolts got locked out for the caliper bolts. I know it's already got that blue stuff on it, but that don't that don't do nothing. Uh, this is to take uh, my cap off of my hub, my bearing and all out of that, that hub that's there. Uh, got my socket wrench and everything here for the caliper bolts, and I got a grease gun and napkins and brake cleaner. To clean everything off of the spindle before I put the new hub on. So uh, yeah, hopefully y'all enjoy this video. Like I said, I don't have all the proper tools for this. I work with what I got. Most of the time it works. And now you just gotta. So I might put that one on there a little tighter. Than I should. There you go. Ew. Gotta keep all these rings here. Cause the way these these new rims are set up on my trailer tires, they get a little bit too close to my uh, calipers. And it takes just a, just a little bit. Keep that thing from tearing my caliper up. So I'll put those on a new hub. And uh, let's see here, I need that flathead screwdriver. Oh, we gotta get this little clip off of this thing. Kind of helps hold the the nut on that keeps all the bearings in there. So I'm gonna take this brake cleaner and clean this thing off. That way, if there's a chance of any. Uh, shavings of metal or anything inside of this it won't go on that new hub and don't mess up any of my new bearings and I've got another can of brake cleaner if I need it I know there's probably another thing you can use but again people I may not have all the proper tools I work with what I got and about 99.9% .9 of the time it works just fine That's, that's that. Take that thing laid up on there. And if y'all ever have to do something like this, just know that brake cleaner does work really well to clean the stuff up. But if you have any cuts on your fingers, you will know. And uh, yeah, I got some friendly dogs here like coming on and visiting around. What's up, dog? 
Apparently, I got a cut on my arm because I feel it. <laughs> Woo! Very clear, nothing to play with. So, we'll, we'll repeat the cleaning step on the nut and the washer inside. Alright, this right here. Washer, let me get that thing out of there. There we go. From here, I'm gonna try to just wipe it down real good and then spray it off a little bit. When you put stuff back together, just always make sure you don't have no grass or dirt or anything like that in it on it because it will cause you problems down the road. I speak from experience. I have been on the side of the road replacing stuff like this many times. Matter of fact, Brandy was, was with me on one where he uh, had an axle catch on fire on that road, and that was not good at all. That was a late day. We missed church that day. Mm -hmm. All right, we got those three items out of the way. They're cleaned up, ready to go into the new hub. We'll put this napkin out of the way. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pull this small bearing out, and we're going to pull the whole hub off. Which in mean and also that means that's gonna pull it should pull the seal out with it, but if not, and we'll just take our pliers and work that seal off, you know, off of the thing. Oh there we go. There it is. Now there's a small bearing, as we call it the outer bearing. Gonna grab a hub, pull it off. So as you can see, part of the seal stayed on there, but it's no problem. I will take pliers. Put that up there. Get that out of the way. And if this don't work, I got a claw hammer that works. And I guess I won't have to get it. Sometimes if you hold your tongue just right, it'll work. There we go. All right, there's the other part of that seal. Now, what are you going to do now? What we're going to do right here, right now, is kind of clean these off a little bit. Up there. We're going to spray that spindle down. See all that dirt on there? It would not be good on bearings. I'll spray it down with that brake cleaner, clean it off real good. And then I'm gonna take my brake line that's tied up in my frame here and get it all fixed up, ready for that new caliper. <sighs> I'll try this. One thing I do like about this trailer, a lot of people ask me, why don't you pack your bearings? Well, the way these uh, axles are set up, there's a grease fitting right here on the end. And right inside of here is a, is a hole where the grease comes out. So your bearings is actually sitting up here past that. So that grease comes out and it comes through your bearings all the way to the very front. So you don't ever have to pack bearings on this trailer. Just make sure you... Oh, shiny again. Shiny and new. The dogs are filthy because they just went and got in the creek. Filthy and wet. They went and rolled around in the creek down there. The creek is down that trail. And they, uh, they went down in there and wallered around. <laughs> Now they come back up here wet. I didn't know where it's cool. 
I've got a napkin over my brake line here. When I took it off, I uh, put paper towels on it. Ah, oh, I got that finger. Uh, anyway, put a paper towel on it, zip tied it up. That way, I wouldn't have to worry about any dirt getting in the end of my brake line. So, worked out pretty good in my opinion. Now I gotta go over here and get my brake coaster. Hub, bearing, seal, bearing, seal, lock. Huh. I get one out of there. Here we go. I know there's a proper way of doing this, but we do this stuff on the road, so we 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 do what we got. Take a little bit of grease, put it on the ring. That'll help me go on the spindle a little bit easier. Don't take a whole lot. Mm. Okay, this is it. You put your small bearing in. And this little doohickey here, this washer has got a flat spot on it. Right there. Because this spindle has got one little flat spot on it. That keeps this thing from moving one way or another. Take that. Set that on there. Just like that. Put it on there. Oh no. And this is a dead hit you here. I call it a doohickey when I don't know what it actually is called. There we go. Now, favorite part of the situation, the messy part. For those of you who have got a manual grease gun. Go online, order you a, a battery operator one. It makes life so much easier. Gonna come out a little bit. See that? Gets in every little crevice of the berries. Inside and out. Just enough juice in this battery to do it. $40, just look up battery operated grease gun, and uh, comes with a charger, two batteries, a grease gun, and uh, if you do a lot of greasing, the way to go. <sighs> Cap. Now, I don't ever worry about the inside of that. I have cleaned them out, and I've done it both ways, clean them and not clean them. It don't make a difference. So.
These ain't got to be killer tight because they're plastic. You'll break them real easy. But just as long as they're snug on there, about like that right there, you're good. Now, I'll get my Loctite caliper bolts here and put that caliper on there. Brake line getting too twisted up down there. I could lift the cap off, but I don't like taking a chance of it leaking on me. Drip, 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 drip it out on me. Dropping it on the bolts? Yeah, right where that blue stuff is. Okay, because I can't see underneath there. Oh, that was way too much, but... Oh. It's on me. Alright, next one I'll show y'all what I do there. Lock tire to ensure that it don't work itself back out. But it is recommendable if you do this, turn your brakes off for at least a day. I like doing this at home. That way it has overnight to sit. So, give it time to dry and cure. So what I do is I take this little red stuff right there on that blue. There it goes. Just like that. It'll work its way around the whole thing. There is a torquer for these things. I don't have it. I don't have one. I just get it pretty, I get a hand tight. Once you get a hand tight, it's usually good. All right, as you can see, there's the rotor beside rotor there. The front side of this one is wore out. When that caliper locked up, it wore all this outside down. The middle is still good. I didn't quite get to that part, but right here, it's gone. I'm gonna put this thing down because it's heavy. Pray the hell. Just that little bit makes a difference. Good old 16 ply trailer tires. <laughs> On solid steel rims, they're heavy. Watch my, my stuff down there. So on this side, you're just replacing the brake pads? Yep. 
get a little thin. Go ahead and replace them for this caliper to lock up on me. Those things there have a tendency to get right in the way when you're trying to get that pad out of there. Now, right, what we're going to do is we're going to shove that back in there. Use your old brake pad to help. Help that thing go in there evenly. Piston, I guess you'd call it. As long as you catch it in time, you can do this. Otherwise, you have to get a new one. And just like that, it shoved in like it needs to be. You don't ever want to use your new brake pads. It's just easier to use the old one. All right. All right, the hickey there. It's in there. You need me to hold it for you? Yeah, hold that right there. Well, that little thing there, you don't need that on there. Not on, not on the trailer. All right, just like that. Just like the other side, we'll put a little bit of this Loctite on it. Tighten her back down. We'll get down there to hold it up for a second. Okay, I won't let it drop until your head's right under it. Okay. Well, I might break it then. <laughs> oh, what was that? Take just a few minutes and do it like this. Or you can take a lot longer and do it like the other side. And that's it, y'all. Put our trailer tire back on, put the blocks up, and we are done. Folks, maintenance with Jesse. Like and subscribe. Drop a comment below. Let me know how poor of a job I did.